Like for example, I'm not sure if you would want to wear a love bracelet or a love ring if you knew that these are inspired by medieval sort of torture objects. Hey guys, my name is GPS and welcome back. Today we'll be chatting about a brand that I usually get a ton of questions on, which is Cartier. Now Cartier is obviously a brand that has become beloved for some of their iconic designs. And I myself went through a phase of really enjoying some of their pieces. But I feel like at this point, it has almost become a default pretty much any time any luxury lover out there wants to go and pick up a new fine jewelry piece or just even as soon as they hear the word fine jewelry, they immediately think of without hesitation of Cartier, which is perfectly fine. Trust me, I can completely understand the appeal of the brand. But I feel that there is a lot that doesn't get discussed when it comes to Cartier, even though I think it's important to get the full picture before investing so much money in one of their pieces. So today I thought that I could share with you my thoughts and my experience with the brand, some of the pros and the cons that I think are worth knowing about. So if you want to hear my thoughts on Cartier, then please keep on watching. I really don't think that at this point, anyone needs an introduction to Cartier, but just in case you're not familiar with the brand, Cartier is a French heritage fine jewelry house that has been around since the mid 1800s. And they're not only well known for creating some of the most popular mainstream fine jewelry pieces, but also for innovating in terms of timepieces, dabbling in leather goods, and also for producing some of the most divine, outstanding high jewelry pieces for royal families and significant people in history using one-of-a-kind diamonds and truly the best of the best when it comes to precious metals and craftsmanship. But today you most likely know them as the brand who has created two of the most popular fine jewelry pieces of our time, the Love Bracelet and then the Justin Claude Bracelet. And it's quite interesting because I think if we look at Cartier as a whole, they kind of stand out from the sea of other fine jewelry houses because they have a really different approach to fine jewelry. If we take another popular heritage French jewelry maker, Bon Cleave, they could honestly not even be mentioned on the same page with Cartier in terms of aesthetic because Bon Cleave has a really different ethos when it comes to fine jewelry and in terms of how they approach design. So Von Cleave's pieces are really old school, they are elegant, they are sophisticated, and they almost have a ladies who lunch sort of feel to them. But then if we take another popular European fine jewelry maker, let's say Chopard, who has Swiss roots, they are much more fun and playful, quite different both from Cartier and Von Cleave. But I feel those are the two main groups that most luxury houses could be categorized in either jewelry houses that are really old school and elegant or ones that are more fun and playful. But Cartier kind of falls in the middle and couldn't really be categorized in either one, even though they make pieces that could be grouped in either category. So for example, if we look at Cartier's just really simple, traditional diamond bands and engagement rings, they definitely create pieces that are old school like Von Cleave. And then if you look at some of their more recent ranges, like the ones that are inspired by desert flowers and cactus, they could definitely be compared to pieces by Chopard. But I think their most popular pieces are completely different from both, being obviously the Justin Clear range and then the Love range. Both of them are much more sort of over the top. They are more loud. They are more obviously luxurious than either luxury house. So they definitely took fine jewelry in a completely different di uh, direction. And I find that it's not only when it comes to their designs that you can see that, but also when it comes to the experience and the branding and the values of this house, that they are sort of much more openly, I think hedonistic would be the best way of putting it. At least that's how I see the brand. But let's move on to talking about some of their pieces and some of the pros and the cons that I experienced. 
And in today's video, I'll mainly be referring to the Love and the Justin Clare ranges, mainly because those are the two highly popular pieces that most people would be interested in. But obviously Cartier has some lesser known and more special and unique ranges. Just to mention one of them, the Panther range, which I think is absolutely breathtaking. If you really want to get something from Cartier that is not often talked about and not often seen, then the Panther line would be a great one to look into. But obviously the one that most people have there on their wish list nowadays are the Love range as well as the Justin Clare range. And I wanted to start with some of the pros of buying either one of these pieces or pretty much any popular piece from Cartier for that matter. And I think the biggest one is the fact that you know what to expect. You've seen these pieces around for so long and so many times that you know exactly what you're getting with these pieces. You know what they're going to look like, you know, you know how you can style them, you know what they look like being worn on their own, you know what they look like being part of a stack, and they are reliable. You're not buying, in, buying something blindly, not knowing what it's going to look like on you, how it's going to act, how it's going to age. You're most likely familiar with all of those things, not only because you've seen it around for so long on social media and in pop culture, but also because of the mass amount of information available out there. So you're not just buying something blindly, which I think is such an important aspect to mention. Another thing that I can think of that makes these pieces worth the investment is the fact that they make a huge statement on their own. So whether you go down the path of buying something from the Love range, be it a ring or a bracelet, or from the Justin Clare range, again, whether it's a bracelet, an earring, or a ring, you know that all of these pieces will make a huge statement, which may or may not be what you're looking for, but I can tell you one thing, they are definitely bold, they are out there, they will make a statement letting people know that you are a lover of luxury and they will most likely get recognized. And then the last thing that I can think of that is definitely a pro is the fact that they have a huge array of different options for you and for any luxury lover out there. So you can go into one of their boutiques, you can pick one range and one design that you enjoy, whether it's the Love range, the Justin Clare range, the Panther range, or a completely different family from Cartier. And you'll find that they have so many different options for every single luxury lover in different price ranges. Obviously, given that these are luxury price ranges that we're talking about, but there will be something if you want to spend a couple thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, or even a hundred thousand dollars. So they try to cater to a larger group of luxury lovers, which I think is a huge positive. Let's move on to some of the downsides of buying more popular pieces from Cartier. And I think the first one is a factor that people don't look into extensively before making a purchase, which is the fact that the resale value of more popular Cartier pieces does actually fluctuate. So I think a lot of the time when people spend so much money on a Cartier Love bracelet or a Justin Clare bracelet, they can justify by saying that it's a good investment because I can always resell this piece if down the line I need the money or if I no longer like it, I can just sell it and get my money back, which is true at times, but unfortunately the resale value of Cartier pieces can fluctuate drastically. At the moment and for the past year or so, I have noticed that the resale value of their pieces is pretty decent. But a few years ago, I remember when I tried to sell pieces, the resale value was nowhere near the retail price. And the fact that the pre-loved market is really oversaturated with Cartier pieces. So even if you try to part ways with a piece that you no longer want in your collection, it will most likely take you some time to get rid of it because there are so many options out there. So unless the piece that you're selling stands out because you can offer such a low price or if it's in such great condition and you can sell it lower than the retail price or not that you can but you're willing to, I think you'll find that it will take you quite a bit of time to part ways with your pieces. The next con is definitely up for debate and I think it will really come down to your personal aesthetic and what you're looking to get out of your luxury pieces. But I would personally argue that their more popular pieces, namely the Love range and the Justin Clare range, 
are quite overpriced for the oversimplified basic designs that they are adorned with. Because if you look at these pieces, there's really not too much to them. They are not special in any ways. And if you really think about the inspiration, it's kind of odd. Now I know that there are many people out there who would argue that any branded fine jewelry is overpriced, which I do agree with to a certain extent, but I feel like there is an exception to the rule. There are pieces that are done in a way that is outstanding. They are molded and sculpted in a way that you can really not find it anywhere else. If they utilize a technique, for example, like Von Cleef, the way they set their stones, that is truly special and there is nothing like it out there. I think purchases can be justified, even though that obviously they should not be as expensive as they are, because for the price of some of these really simple pieces, you could absolutely go to an independent jeweler, buy yourself a five carat tennis bracelet and still laugh your way to the bank. So I can completely understand why people would argue that, but I feel there are exceptions to the rule. I'm not sure if the Cartier Love Range is one of those exceptions, because I find that if you strip away the branding and the psychological cues, you'll find that some of these pieces are quite strange looking. Like for example, I'm not sure if you would want to wear a love bracelet or a love ring if you knew that these are inspired by medieval sort of torture objects. I'm not sure if they were used exactly to torture people, but they were used to restrict people. And then the Justin Clue line is obviously inspired by a simple nail. The name literally means just a nail. So it's kind of a strange idea to wear these pieces around our wrists and on our fingers. So if you're someone who looks at these objectively and you're like, hey, I still love this, I think it looks super cool, by all means go for them. Let's quickly touch on the quality of Cartier pieces, which you would most likely expect to be flawless and just the best in the world for the prices that you're paying. But that is unfortunately not always the case. Now, one thing that I have to give to them is the fact that they always try to use the highest quality diamonds and precious metals. Their pieces are made of solid 18 karat yellow, pink, or white gold, even in some cases, platinum. And one thing that you'll notice that if you lift any one of their pieces and you really feel them, you'll immediately feel how heavy and substantial they are. They don't feel flimsy or lightweight. They are really robust, which I think is so important when you're paying so much money for precious metals. But one thing, well actually two things that people don't often consider are the fact that their pieces do get scratched and marked up extremely fast, which may not be something that bothers you, but I know it bothers a lot of people out there. Thankfully, Cartier used to offer a free sort of surface cleaning, which I mentioned before, that you could take in your pieces and they could quickly polish the pieces up for you on site to give them just a fresh look. But if you do want to give them a more severe facelift, if there is something that needs to get done, you do have to leave them with Cartier for a much longer period of time and you will be responsible for paying for that cleaning service. So if your bracelet is really scuffed up and it really needs to be sort of almost redone. It just basically needs a facelift. It will get shipped away, I believe, to France and they'll be responsible for cleaning it there. And I believe last time I asked that service usually costs a couple hundred dollars, given that nothing else needs to be fixed on the bracelet. It just needs a deep clean. And there are only so many times that you can do that because every time they do that sort of polishing, you polish a really thin layer of the bracelet or the ring away. So at one point in theory, it could, your bracelet could become so thin that it really loses its integrity. So it is something for you to consider that it will scratch, it will get marked up. So if you're someone like me who gets really bothered by that, these pieces might not be the perfect choice for you. But as I mentioned, hopefully their sort of surface level cleaning will be back at one point. And then I think a more important point to mention is the fact that the fine mechanism and fine details of their love pieces, as well as their Justin Clerk pieces, is not as flawless as it should be for the prize. I have several friends who lost love bracelets, who lost Justin Clerk bracelets, or even just as little things as screws and screwdrivers, because they get loose over time and they just fall out of your bracelets which is not something that you would expect to experience when you're spending so much money on one of these pieces. Now, 
I have heard rumors that Cartier recommends that you put a little adhesive or a little super glue into the mechanism of your pieces and that should keep the screw from getting loose over time and falling, up, falling apart and falling out of your pieces, which I don't think is something that anyone out there wants to be doing when they spend over $10,000 on one of these pieces. So I think it's important to note that their quality is not as flawless as it really should be. But the final straw for me personally, which I guess you could say made me fall out of love with the brand, is that these pieces are so extremely overdone at this point that they're almost a cliche. Every single time you look on social media or you look in a magazine that has anything to do with luxury fashion, you can be assured that there will be some sort of reference made to either the love bracelet or the Justin Kleur family. And I feel like there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, but because of all the hype, these pieces are just no longer exciting or special to me. And I feel that when you spend so much money on a luxury piece, you either want it to be special and unique, or you want to feel some sort of a personal connection to the quality or the heritage. And I personally don't have that with these Cartier pieces. So for me, I find that to be the main reason why I no longer really reach for and enjoy these pieces in my personal collection. And I think it's important to mention because if you are someone who's had any one of these pieces on your wish list for years, it's important to note that there is sort of that lack of excitement with these pieces that you may or may not feel that if you add this to your collection, you are just sort of joining the crowd. But this is it guys, this completes today's video on my thoughts on Cartier. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I would love to know your stance on the brand. Do you still enjoy their pieces? Do you feel that they are still exciting? Because for me, it's really that excitement that is currently missing. I would love to know what you think about the brand. Let me know in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.